Good morning, everybody. Wow, it is a beautiful, sunny, warm morning. But I'm in my most favorite spot in the garden. I'm in the row of peppers. Today I'm gonna to be harvesting some jalapenos to make an awesome, sweet, yet spicy treat that we love throughout the year. But I'm first going to check out the bell peppers that we have here. I have about, I don't know, 12 bell pepper plants here. And yesterday I was taking a peek and I think that some of them are ready to harvest. So I thought that I would bring you guys along to see what kind of big bell peppers we can harvest before I take them into the house. Now bell peppers, we eat a lot of them fresh during the summer, but to preserve them for the rest of the year, we mainly dice them and freeze them in freezer bags. And then as I need them throughout the winter, I can just bang on them on the counter, get some out to put in our eggs or any of my soups, any casseroles or Mexican dishes that I make throughout the year. So this is an exciting time for me, an exciting part of the year where I get to start restocking the freezer, restocking the shelves. So let's see what we can find today for the bell peppers before we move on to our jalapenos. The variety that we are growing mostly this year is called California Wonder. There are a couple of the Emerald Giant, which is actually my all time favorite kind of bell pepper to grow, but this year they didn't germinate very well. So hopefully the California Wonder will meet my expectations this year and I'll be very pleased. Well, these first couple of plants have lots of baby peppers starting, but not big enough for me to harvest yet as far as I like. I like for them to be nice and big and mature, and that will make sure that the, the walls of them are nice and thick and juicy and sweet. Well, here is what I'm looking for. That is a nice bell pepper. Let's see how many more of these we can get. If I only get a couple of these, maybe three or something, that'll be fine. It's a good start. Found another nice one. Wow. Look at that. It always amazes me when the harvest starts coming in, just how gorgeous homegrown veggies can be and how quickly they can grow. Well, it looks like that's it for today for the bell peppers. We got four beautiful bell peppers. Now we need to move on to the jalapenos. This year we're growing two varieties of jalapenos. One that is spicy called Craig's Grande Jalapeno from Baker Creek. And the other one isn't spicy at all. And that is called Nada Pena, which is also from Baker Creek. Some of our family likes hot peppers. Some of our family doesn't, but we all like the flavor of jalapenos. Today I'm gonna to be harvesting the spicy variety, the Craig's Grande Jalapenos. And we're gonna be making what's called cowboy candy or candied jalapenos. They're very good. I am going to basically strip these three plants of the Craig's Grande. I'm gonna strip them clean of the nice size jalapenos. They are loaded with blossoms, so I don't have to worry about taking too many. On our homestead, we use jalapenos for these cowboy candy, also in salsa, and I also do a lot of pickling of spicy peppers. So let's get picking and see what we have, and then we'll take them in the house.
A couple things we've been noticing this year in the garden, which is fantastic, is that we have a lot of ladybugs and we have a lot of dragonflies. We had quite a few last year too, but this year they're just everywhere. They seem to be controlling the bugs pretty well because we're not having a huge problem with bugs this year, which is great. Now that we're in the house, I just want to show you again these green bell peppers just so that you can see the size of these guys. I am so pleased with our first harvest of these bell peppers. This is what makes gardening so exciting. The end result with these gorgeous vegetables. Anyway, I just had to show you uh, these guys again. Now it's time to set them aside and get started preserving these jalapenos. You know, at this time of the summer is when things get really busy with harvesting and preserving out of the garden. And it's this time of year that I tell myself if I am not canning or preserving something every day, I'm going to get behind. And with our goal to grow and preserve as much of our own food as possible every summer or every growing season, it is imperative for me to harvest and preserve every day. So this is gonna be something kind of fun for me to share with you guys. Candied jalapenos or cowboy candy isn't something that's going to sustain you uh, in a meal. It's really a fun addition to a meal or maybe an hors d'oeuvre. Now, I haven't even really explained to those of you who don't know what cowboy candy is or what uh, candied jalapenos is. It's jalapenos that are preserved in a sugar syrup, a flavored sugar syrup. I'm gonna be canning them so that they'll be good for up to two years on the shelf, although we will eat them far sooner than two years. And they're just really tasty and spicy. Now, my favorite way to eat this cowboy candy is on crackers, crackers and cream cheese. You know when you go to parties and they serve like a block of cream cheese and on top of it they dump like jam or something like that. These cowboy candy jalapenos on top of a block of cream cheese with that syrup on top eaten with crackers is so good. But Kevin's not a cream cheese kind of guy. He actually likes cowboy candy on top of a burger and then to put barbecue sauce on top. That's his favorite. Okay, so now you know what it is. Now you know a couple ways to eat it. Let's get started making the cowboy candy. Okay guys, so for reference, this amount of jalapenos here is about two and a half pounds. Uh, the different recipes that you'll find online will tell you what to do with one pound or three pounds or something like that. So this is under three pounds, about two and a half pounds. The first thing we're gonna be doing is cutting all of these jalapenos into slices, like the circle slices, and we're gonna set them aside in a bowl I am using gloves because these are super spicy and I don't want those spicy oils to be in my skin and then I get them on my lips or rub my eyes and my eyes will burn. So I hope that you will do the same thing. Now, if you don't like super spicy things, at this point when you're cutting them, you can remove all the seeds. Um, I don't mind the seeds or the heat, so I'm just gonna keep mine in and that will make this process a lot faster for me. The thickness of them should be about um, an eighth to a quarter of an inch wide. Now I do have a mandolin that I could be using and if you have one, you could use one as well. But I find for this recipe, it cuts it just a little bit too thin. So that just means I get to do some hand chopping, which I really don't mind doing. When I was growing up and I was helping my mom in the kitchen, Oftentimes my job was to chop the vegetables and shred the cheese, and I don't really mind that, and it brings back good memories.
Well, that amount of jalapenos made a nice sized bowl of these rings. So now we just need to get this cleaned up and we're going to get started making the syrup that will go with these jalapenos. The next step is to make the syrup that we're gonna pour on top of the jalapeno slices. Now syrups have a lot of sugar and so does this syrup. If you're just having a little bit of it every once in a while, a lot of sugar isn't that big of a deal. So I'm not too worried about it. So we're gonna start this syrup out with two cups of apple cider vinegar. I know that seems kind of strange to be using apple cider vinegar as the only liquid in this syrup, but it makes a real nice tangy, sweet, spicy end to it. Okay, we're also gonna be adding sugar, six cups of sugar. I'm using evaporated cane juice. You can use white sugar if you'd like, but this is just what we buy here on the homestead. We're gonna add that to the apple cider vinegar. There are a couple other spices that we're gonna add to this mixture. We're gonna start off with a half of a teaspoon of turmeric. The turmeric is gonna give it a nice flavor, but it's also gonna give it a really nice color. Turmeric is naturally very yellow, and they actually use turmeric as a yellow food dye substitute in a lot of uh, recipes these days instead of using uh, the yellow dyes. So half of a teaspoon. We're also gonna add half of a teaspoon of celery seed. That will also add a nice flavor. Three teaspoons of uh, granulated garlic or garlic powder. Do you see this giant jar of garlic? We order all of our spices and most of our other cooking products in bulk from Azure Standard. We go through tons of garlic, lots of the sugar, which is where we got the sugar from too. And if you're interested in buying bulk, they have great prices on organic products. You can check them out at Azure Standard. We'll have that information in the description of this video uh, below. Okay, one more ingredient. We need to have some cayenne pepper. Kick it up a notch as if the jalapenos weren't hot enough. We're gonna add one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. When you start buying spices in bulk, you're like, where am I supposed to put all these? I don't have jars for every one of them and I don't want that much. Well, I found these fantastic spice jars on Amazon and they come with like a ton of different stickers that you can put on here. They're very affordable. I think I got a box of 30 of them. I can't remember how much, but I love them. They're super handy. The tops, you can either shake or open it and you can pour. Um, I, I love these. And once you switch all of your spices over, they all look the same and I really like that. So if you're interested in looking at these, it'll be in our Amazon shop. Okay, those are all the ingredients that we need for this syrup. I'm just gonna give it a stir, but then I'm also gonna transfer this onto the stove top. We're gonna bring this up to a boil so that all that sugar can melt in the uh, apple cider vinegar, and then we'll move on to the next step. Well, it's boiling. We need to turn down the heat and let this just simmer for five minutes. Not continue to boil, just to simmer for five minutes. Okay, that has simmered for five minutes and now we're gonna gently add, I'm gonna turn the heat off for this just a second. We're gonna gently add the jalapeno slices into the simmering liquid. Now be careful, it's really hot. We're gonna add that in there, stir it up, I'm gonna turn the heat back on, just on like a low heat. What we're doing here is we're cooking the jalapenos a little bit to let them soften. Now we're gonna do this for four minutes. Set my timer. So you want the jalapenos to soften a little bit so that more 
of the jalapenos fit in your jars. The first time I made um, cowboy candy, I thought I was way smarter than this, and I decided to raw pack the jalapenos into the jars. Well, it worked out fine, and they tasted great, and they held their seal and everything, but the jalapeno shrunk so much in the canning process because I didn't pre warm them, I didn't pre-soften them, that it really was a lot of wasted jar space. The jar was only about half full with jalapenos because they had just softened and got so much smaller. So now I know to uh, cook these a little bit before I start canning them. Now that those are done, I'm going to Turn off the heat like I just did and we need to ladle out with a slotted spoon all of the jalapeno slices. Let as much of that syrup drain out as possible. And we'll be setting these aside because after we do this part we need to bring that syrup back up to a boil and let it boil hard for uh, for about five minutes. That will be the right temperature then to begin the canning process. So they're all strained out. You can see that they're a different color and they're a lot softer than before. So now like I said we need to turn this heat back on, bring the syrup up to a boil, and let it boil hard for five minutes before we can start the canning process. The syrup has started to boil and we need it to be boiling hard, which means when you stir it, the boiling doesn't go away. It has reached that point already. I have set my timer. I had told you to let it boil for five minutes, but we're actually going to have it boil for six minutes. When it's done, we'll be ready for canning. Okay, this is all finished. It's time to carry this over to the other counter so we can start canning this cowboy candy. This is a little bit different of a process than we've done before because the jalapenos are separate from the liquid, so we have two things to put in the jars. So I'm going to start with the jalapenos here, put them in the jar. We're going to fill those all the way up to the top. I actually brought a whisk to push those down in there. Let me tell you. <coughs> that all of this stuff really kind of gets to you. So if you can open a window or have a fan on, that would be great. I don't have those things because I don't want any noise disturbance or the fan to affect my canning here. But just beware that it can kind of take your breath away. Okay, so I'm gonna check here, push those down. Now that we've got enough jalapenos in there, we need to backfill with this syrup and we're going to put it all the way up to one quarter of an inch from the top. I'm going to use a chopstick to just poke down in there to make all of the bubbles come to the top. I think that's a good um, distance from the top, but I am going to check it with one of these little tools here. Yep. It's good. Now I just need to wipe off the rim of this jar. You know, this syrup is pretty sticky and it's really going to easily get on the rim of that jar and it needs to be clean before we put a lid on top of there. So make sure you wipe that off, put your lid on and a ring. We're going to set this aside until we get all of them ready for the canner. Now I have my canner going, it's heating up on the stove. Uh, with enough water that it's going to cover these jars by at least an inch or two. Okay, so let's put more jalapenos in here. Backfill with this syrup. This is so fun. 
get the bubbles out. I'm make sure those are packed down in there. Looks good. Clean that off again. Put a lid on and the ring. We'll just do this until all of the jalapenos are in the jars. Well, the last few slices of jalapenos are not going to fill another jar. So I'm just gonna put them in the jar, add a little bit of syrup and put them in the refrigerator and then we will eat those first. So this recipe that I showed you actually made four full jelly jars. That's not a whole lot for all of those jalapenos that we harvested. And I actually have a lot of the syrup left over. Let me show you. And I'm gonna add a little bit over here but there's a lot left over. So a couple things. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this syrup in the refrigerator for when I harvest more jalapenos. What a lot of people do is they just can this syrup because it's super good as a glaze on top of meat and they find other creative ways to use it. So don't throw this out. It is full of wonderful goodness. Now we need to can these four jars. So we're gonna put these in the canner and get them going. Now it turns out there's not enough water in that canner. No big deal, I'm just gonna add some to the top until it is the right depth. And I'm gonna turn the canner on and when it comes to a boil, we'll set the timer. Okay, that's all set. Now when this comes back up to a boil, we're gonna set our timer for 15 minutes. These need to process for 15 minutes. But check your elevation and make sure that it is not higher than is recommended for just standard times. For instance, our elevation is above 1,000 feet above sea level, and so that means we need to increase our processing time by five minutes. So standard time is 15, but we need to process for 20. The timer has gone off, so these are all done. I'm gonna turn off the heat, and I'm actually going to remove the lid and then just let these chill out in here for five minutes before I take them out of the canner and put them on to the counter. So we'll be back in five minutes. Okay, they're all done. They're set to come out of the canner. This is the exciting part when all of your hard work is over and you can transfer them onto the counter. They can cool down. So they're all finished. Now we just need to wait and make sure that they seal. And you know they do that because you'll hear a popping sound. You guys, I hope that you learned something new. I hope that you have the courage to try this. And I hope that I explain this in a way that takes some of the fear out of canning. I have an entire playlist of canning. Make sure you check those out, especially if you're new to canning. And if you have made this cowboy candy before and you have an awesome way to use it that I haven't talked about, please make sure to include that in the comment section below. You guys, make sure that you subscribe to our channel if you want notifications of when we put out our new videos. We would appreciate it. And the best way that you can help us is to share our videos and all your social media. Until next time, thanks so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless.